So what's happening, boys? Everybody calm down. Overlord has finally made its debut on Grand Summoners Global, and with it, it's brought quite a few units that are pretty powerful. But this always brings up the age-old question, should you summon or should you not? And the first banner we got is a real spicy one, with Albedo and Shaltir. I would say these are two super awoken units, which technically that is true, but one of the super awoken units can't even be super awoken. Can you believe that? And these are actually the only two units on the banner. There's no other characters featured on this banner, but that alone isn't enough to warrant summoning on the banner. What about the characters themselves, Shaltir and Albedo? How are they? Now, Albedo is the defensive character of this banner, bolstering a lot of defensive buffs to the team if you are a demon ally. If you're a demon ally, you get increased damage and damage res every time she uses her art, up to a maximum of 30%. By the way, this is a permanent buff. She also has a true art that's able to apply a barrier to everyone and give everybody 20% physical resistance. And then her super art is a hybrid between a nuke and a defensive buff. She also has some pretty decent passives, being able to have paralysis resist and freeze resist at 100%. And she has a unique passive that increases her own art gauge by 300 and heals all allies HP by 50% if she ever gets into a near death state. Uses for Albedo are pretty clear. On one hand, you have a character that's able to be a really strong defensive attack for demon allies and not just demon allies she also can be used alongside other characters but of course having her in a demon team is going to be where she wants to be but one problem i see in terms of her defensive capabilities is that i feel like she's similar to that of nice from back in the day he looked extremely promising with his 90 percent damage mitigation that he had on his true art but the problem was is that it only lasted for three seconds and i feel like we're kind of in a similar situation with Albedo Super Art. Albedo Super Art unfortunately only lasts for 10 seconds, which is enough for you to survive a fatal attack, but I would much rather that be maybe 15 seconds or possibly even 12. I think 12 would just be better than 10, but even with me nitpicking like that, she still is a great defensive attacker and possibly even a good nuker if you actually can make some teams around her. I think that her nuking potential is hurt a little bit due to her slots not being the greatest. Unfortunately though, I think that's kind of where her uses stop. If you don't need somebody with all these defensive buffs or you're not really going to be trying to nuke with her, you probably aren't going to be using this character really at all. Next is the girl Shaltir. Well, Shaltir is great in terms of being a damage dealer and in terms of just doing what she usually does, especially if you look at any type of gameplay that she has on the Japanese version of the game. The main problem with this unit that I have right now is the fact that we don't have access to the Super Awakening, which we will have access to it later on down the line, but I feel like it kind of is rubbing me the wrong way here since we're not going to be having the full potential of this character's kit. Either way, if you do wind up getting Shaltir, what are you getting? You're getting a character that is able to deal stupid DPS. She has tons of damage ups in her kit from lifesteal with the skill, reducing dark and light resist with the arts, and even buffing up her own crit damage by 200%. But her main gimmick is revolved around her super art, the one thing we can't access. The super art gives you five arts per second for 80 seconds, and it summons her clone. This clone will mimic all of her attacks apart from any type of equip usage. So any of her arts and skills are on the table for that mimic to use, which means that this pretty much allows you to double the modifiers of all of your attacks. If this wasn't enough, she's also very self-sufficient in terms of her passive. She has abilities that's able to increase her own crit rate by 100% if she's above 70% HP, and she increases her own art gauge at 50 at the start of the quest, and you buff up your own damage to enemies under 30% HP by 30%. Shaltir is probably the damage dealer to get. It's either her or Senki. So if you're looking for a DPS character, look no further than this girl right here. The only negatives that I can really say about Shaltir is for one, she's a magic damage dealer. And as you guys know, magic damage support characters, we do have quite a bit, but we don't have as much of an abundance of them as we do with physical damage buffers. And because of that, if you wind up getting this character, it's a possibility that you won't have anybody to run alongside her to to make her damage just skyrocket. Of course, you can use other damage buffers, but you know, maybe you wanna try to stick to that magic damage, right? But you may not have anyone to stick to that magic damage. And the other thing is that she is somewhat reliant on her super art. She can still do lots of damage with the true art alone, since it has a 90k multiplier with 200% crit damage on it. But if you're really trying to see the big DPS, she really wants to be in her super art as much as possible, which means we can't even see that, unfortunately. Either way, this is a character that if you invest into her, she won't let you down, especially once you're able to super awaken her. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on to the verdict of this banner. Should you summon or should you not? I think everyone should at least do your first multi-summon on this banner. Since it is a new crossover and these characters are new for everyone, if you wind up looking out and getting somebody, hey, that's pretty good. But in terms of whether you should spend more crystals past that point, well, here's my thought process right now. I don't think this banner is worth 
too many crystals unless you just really want Shaltir. Shaltir is absolutely worth a pity if you want to go for her. Even without Super Awakening, whenever she eventually gets it, she's going to be an absolute monster. The problem with this banner is that it's just not as good as the next banner coming out. Those units being Gamma and Ainz have a lot more uses apart from just being huge stat sticks that do tons of damage. Either way, there's no wrong decision here that you can make. You either get a very strong attacker or it's a chance that you get a very strong support unit and possibly even a support attacker. You're not going to be wasting crystals no matter what banner you summon on. I will say, me myself, I don't know if I'm going to be summoning on this banner. I might be making a summon video tomorrow on it, but uh, I'm not for sure. I may just be waiting until Ainz and Albedo comes out in like a week or two to actually do a summon video then. So we'll see what happens, but thank you all for coming out. It's been your boy OP. Tell me down below if you guys are going to be going for Shaltir and Albedo or you guys are going to be waiting for Ainz and Gamma. Or are you saving for an entirely different character coming out later on? Let me know all that stuff down below in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this video, how do we can check out either one of the videos popping on the screen right now? Great content, guarantee you'll love them. Oh, and one more thing, don't forget to drink water.